This is not clickbait or hyperbole. The ATF has just changed the game for anyone who owns an NFA Title II weapon, machine guns, suppressors, SBRs, SBSs, AOWs, by ruling in their FAQs that no one but the registered individual or responsible persons is allowed to be in any form of possession or else felony. Let's get into this. So under current application of law, let's imagine if I have a suppressor here, right? This pen is a suppressor. It's not ATF, but let's just imagine that it were. I could loan this to a friend at the range or something like that, provided that they remain in my presence. That is the application of basically how everything works. That's why certain stores and ranges can rent out machine guns, things like that, because they have an employee who presumably remains in the presence of the item. That's what, how everything works right now. That is now changing according to this ATF FAQ. I'm going to read from the FAQ. I'm also going to post it verbatim in the description box below. Keep in mind to access it, which is from the eForms ATF.gov website. You need to create a free account, which is absolutely free to do. But again, it's in the description box below. Question. If I'm the registered owner of an NFA item, can someone else shoot my item in my presence? Old answer, yes. New answer, no. Only responsible persons listed on the approved registration may have physical or constructive possession of an NFA item. Wow. What does that mean? Let's take a quick moment to unpack this. They specifically list two different types of possession. Physical, which means I'm in physical possession of my pen. This is physical possession. But if I put the pen down on the table and I slide it across the table, or imagine if you walk into a restaurant, you sit down, there's a salt shaker on the table. You may have never seen that salt, that salt shaker before in your life. But when you sit down at the table, you have knowledge and you have access. You can reach it, which means you are now in constructive possession of that salt shaker. That's what constructive possession means. Knowledge plus access. Your mileage may vary depending upon where you are. That's the gist to it. They are now saying that anybody who's in constructive possession. So once you imagine you're out at the range, you're at a shooting lane, whatever the case may be, you put your suppressor down on the table. Arguably now your buddy has access and knowledge of that, which means they just committed a felony because you put it down on the table. Also, depending upon your state language and laws, does that mean that you gave them access to that weapon? Did you just commit a felony by doing that? Let's unpack this a bit further. And FFLs I'm gonna to get to you in a moment. Individuals can take possession of these items in one of predominantly four different ways. One, they rent it at a range or something like that. That's done, according to this FAQ. That is done, cannot do that. Number two, Someone loans it to them. That is done unless they are a co-trustee or a responsible person as defined by the ATF rules and regulations, cannot do any kind of loans or anything like that. That leaves two other ways. Either they are an individual papered entity. So for instance, they did a form one, a form four, maybe a form five, if it's a tax-free transfer or something like that. Okay, so that means it's papered to they themselves as an individual, which now means that if their spouse comes into possession of it, so I want you to imagine you're sitting around the kitchen table or you, you know, get home on a Saturday afternoon after the range, you put your suppressor down on the table to go to the bathroom, your spouse walks into the room. Felony, 10 years prison, maybe both of you. That's what the ATF is saying. They didn't say physical possession. They went out of their way to say constructive possession. The other way that you can do this is through a trust or some sort of corporate entity, maybe an LLC, but most commonly a revocable living trust. So all the folks, what the ATF are saying is all the registered persons, all the responsible parties should be okay. Depending upon how your trust is set up, that's typically going to be co-trustees. So all the co-trustees are going to be okay. I hope that includes your spouse, your roommate, whoever else, and I hope those people are not prohibited possessors because obviously that's not an end around the prohibited possessor law. But anybody who comes into possession, either real, actual, or constructive, done. Stores and retailers, unless you're going to be adding people as employees in order to rent out or go through different legal accommodation tactics, which I'm not going to get into here because I don't want this video to go long, can no longer rent out. What's more, because of the constructive possession language that the ATF is insisting on, 
Does that mean that you can even have an SBR, an AOW, a machine gun, or anything like that on the pegboard behind the counter? Because keep in mind, if an individual if a, walks into your store, walks into your establishment, they see that. Is that arguably within lunge distance for either of them to go over the counter or maybe around and behind the counter? Obviously, you have employees, and I'm assuming those employees are well-trained on what to do to stop people from being able to do that, but that doesn't stop the fact that an aggressive anti-gun prosecutor may be open to making those arguments at your felony jury trial. Not fair, but I'm letting you know this is the new reality we're living in. Also keep in mind that if you sell SBRs or suppressors or something like that, you technically, according to this FAQ, can no longer even allow customers to handle the devices. Right? You can have an employee look at it, but they can't even set it down on top of the counter. It either has to be behind lock and key or in the employee's physical possession such that the individual cannot take any form of possession whatsoever, whether real or constructive. That's what the ATF is now saying. I just want to touch on the fact that if the ATF is actually going to be enforcing this, if this is the type of enforcement we're going to see out of federal or different state governments, then I really hope this applies to Hollywood actors and actresses and so forth too, who handle machine guns, who handle... SBRs and so forth as part of movie sets. Unless they're going to be doing the same legal accommodation tactics that you and I have to go through, I hope that they're going to get the exact same justice that everybody else does. If the ATF is going to be going after honest, law-abiding citizens and potentially putting them behind bars, then I hope that they're going to be going after folks who are basically anti-gun in every action that they have, except for the fact that they're willing to take your money down the lens and my money out here in order to go see their movies. All right? Guys, show your support for the Second Amendment. Please consider clicking like on this video to help spread the word. Share it on social media. Hopefully we can get this changed. Also, please consider clicking subscribe to help our humble channel grow. We'll see you in the next one.